Thank you everyone for joining us today for Technology 101 for Small Businesses, part of the Small Business Webinar Series. My name is Duke Nguyen Abrahamson. I am the Executive Director of the Asian Pacific American Chamber of Commerce, also known as APAC. This year, APAC celebrates our 22 years of facilitating business relationships among Asian-owned and U.S.-based companies and promoting the economic advancement of the Asian American Pacific Islander. Businesses owned by Asian Americans with heritage from China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Vietnam, the Philippines, and India, among other countries, Fortune 500 corporations, entrepreneurs, business professionals, cultural organizations and associations, and political and government dignitaries have supported APAC throughout the years and are the reason for our success. We are a collective voice for 30 plus Asian and Asian Pacific countries. We are able to do this through our strategic partnerships with Asian cultural associations throughout Michigan and nationally, and through our sponsors. Thank you to General Motors for supporting the AAPI small business community and National ACE for being our national partner. Let me begin by introducing Cheng Lu, APAC Small Business Action Committee member. Cheng is a certified public accountant with over 10 years of experience as a tax professional helping clients with tax planning and compliance. An advisory and tax manager at Raymond where he specializes in helping small to mid-sized businesses in various industries um, claim the R&D tax credit. Cheng? Thanks Duke for the Great uh, introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. As Duke mentioned, I'm Cheng Lu, and I'm, I'm a committee member of SBAC. Um, this is a fairly new committee that was formed last year with a goal to support APEC's small Asian business community. One of our main focuses is to provide educational content, such as webinars, to help small businesses navigate some of the challenges that they might be facing or dealing with. And we can cover pretty much any business related topics um, such as taxes, financing, advertising, and et cetera. Uh, if there are any challenges or issues that you are dealing with as a small business operator, we want to hear from you. So please get in touch with us and we'll connect with the subject matter experts in creating useful content for you and others. Uh, with that, I'm super excited to introduce you to our speaker for today. Al Pacha, who will be speaking about technology for small businesses. Al, I will pass it over to you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Cheng, and um, thank you, Duke, and everybody at APAC for this opportunity. And uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night to everybody, wherever everybody is in their time zones. And I am Al Pacha. I, I am the owner of Al Pacha Inc. And we are a, a, a technology service provider. Uh, we help small to mid-sized businesses with their technology needs. And for larger companies and organizations, uh, we do custom software solutions for that. So just a quick thing, uh, who's Alpac? Uh, we are an Ann Arbor, Michigan-based company uh, with the goal of providing simple, high-quality, cost-effective technology solutions to businesses for the past 25 years. Uh, our whole solution is simple solutions for complex business processes. That's our goal. If we can make it simple for the companies, then that helps the clients with the productivity and for profitability. And we have, we serve clients from individual entrepreneurs to Fortune 1000 companies to Big 10 universities and Alpac helps organizations of all sizes. And we believe, our core belief is the solution we deliver help uh, our, our clients gain a competitive edge and drives growth in their market. So for you, for us to be successful, we want you to be successful. And we will do our best to make you successful by using the right technologies available at the most cost-effective solutions or that's possible for your needs, for your business needs, so. 
Uh, let, let's dive more into uh, technology for 101 for small businesses. With this great uh, resignation that occurred in the last two years, there have been lots of small businesses. People have left their uh, corporate jobs and joined and started their own business. Yes, you started your own business, you just started or you've been in business for a while. One thing you do need now for any business is to have technology with you. There has to be technology, otherwise you will not last in business for long. So for the technology, the first thing is computers. What computers to buy? What are the computers available in the market that you should look for? So there are three core types of computers that are right now available in the market. One is a Windows, Microsoft Windows PC, we are all very familiar with. The other one is a new thing is called Google Chromebook. This also we are familiar, we have children, they're all using Chromebooks in their schools. And those are, and so that's a Chromebook. And the new entrant in this market is an iPad, Apple iPad. You'll be surprised the power that an iPad has also. Typically you could use any of these three devices as a computers to, for your business. Uh, we'll go into little more details once we go into more. And so where would you buy this from? Favorite place, Costco. If you're a Costco member, they have good deals at Costco. And with Costco, they give you extended warranty. That's a fantastic option at no additional cost. The other good place is a Best Buy. These are my preferences. So again, everybody may have their own preferences. And so it's Best Buy. There you can go and touch and feel and see and look at all the different computers, ask the, the folks, the representatives who work there for details on what this computer does and how it is, and they'll, they'll give you all the information. That, that's a great place. The other one, of course, we all know about Amazon. You can also go to Amazon and buy computers. You get some good deals during the Amazon Prime days, Black Friday days. And if you're buying an iPad, walk into an Apple store in your local mall, wherever the Apple has a store. And of course, you can always go sh and shop online with any of the manufacturers of computers, Microsoft, Dell, HP, Lenovo, Acer, et cetera, et cetera. There are lots of them in the market. So, Al, um, with everything that you've listed, um, a computer for their small business, is there a, a, a store that they're purchasing from that may also provide uh, support services? Because um, not everybody is tech savvy. Absolutely. So if you go to Best Buy, they have the Greek, uh, Geek Squad. They give you support. For, I think it's about $99 a year. Of, I, I forget the value, the amount. But you can buy support from them. Costco also sells you support. So you'll be surprised that all these uh, companies and organizations, they'll sell you support for an extra cost. So yes, if you don't have a tech, tech, techie guy or technology person in your organization, or you don't know anybody in your friend's circle or family who can help you with support, absolutely, they all sell you support for a little additional cost. And sometimes that may be the best thing you could buy is you get sleep well at night not to worry about, oh, what happens if tomorrow something goes wrong? Because, hey, you paid for it, they'll come and help you. They'll come and buy it, do it for you. And also the support is if you buy directly from these companies, from Microsoft, Dell, they'll sell you additional warranty and support also. So you can uh, say, hey, you know, for extra couple hundred dollars, they will do 24 hours on-site support. Within 24 hours, they'll come to your home office, or to your home or your office, wherever you're registered, and they'll, and they'll fix your computers for you. Do you see the need for the extended warranty or do you are buying new computers every three years? What's the, what's the trend? I personally buy extended warranty for computers because typically nowadays the computers can last you for easily five years if you take care of them. Earlier, the life cycle for a computer was three years, but now it goes up to five years. 
you can easily. So I, I personally buy it because sometimes, hey, you know, you drop a computer, you spill some coffee, it, it, things happen, right? And you want to be assured that should something happen like that, there is somebody there to help you out, somebody there to support you, somebody there to fix it for you. And you don't have to, again, spend thousands of dollars buying a computer. And as the law of Murphy's happened, it always happens when you don't have that extra money in your pocket. You're still waiting for your accounts payable to give you some cash. You, have, you don't have good cash flow and then your computer dies on you. So as a small business, I personally I always buy extended warranty. It gives me that peace of mind and I can sleep well at night. And with that, you can also extend the life of your laptop or your computer more than you want to. You can extend it by a couple more years. Things are so good now, you don't need to buy a new computer every two years, every three years. So I hope that helps uh, the folks who are on the webinar. Hey, so great. So you know what you're looking for. You know where to buy it from. So what do you look for when you're buying a computer? This is, again, my personal thing. When I'm buying a laptop, I look for the weight. How heavy is this laptop going to be? Because, hey, I'm going to use this, uh, this computer for four to five years, for five years at least, four to five years. And in, in these four to five years, I'm getting old. I'm going to get old. So is it going to be too heavy for me to walk this computer, this laptop from one room to the other room? or from my office to the parking lot to back to my house, or if I'm going on a short, long weekend to carry my work. As a small business, we don't get vacations. We, we don't get paid vacations at all. So you need your laptop, you need your computer with you so your clients can reach you wherever you are, even if you're in the middle of a vacation, unfortunately. That's the life of a small business and entrepreneur that we have chosen and not as a corporate secretary, it's a, it's a executive where we have the luxury of having two weeks of vacation without anybody bothering you. So I, I look for in weight, I look for the weight to see, is it light enough, is it heavy enough for me to carry it around? And of course, weight and cost go hand in hand. The lighter the machine, the more expensive it is. So you have to come with a right balance as to how much you're willing to spend and how much you're willing to carry the weight. The other thing is screen size. How tiny do you want your screen? How big do you want your screen to be? That again, depends on your personal preference. And again, as we get older, hey, we need glasses. So after three, four, five years, is that small, tiny screen going to work for you? Maybe yes. Hey, we are blessed with good eyesight. Of course, why not? Oh, like me, I need glasses nowadays. So a yeah, little tiny one, it becomes too strainful to my eyes. So I may get a bigger screen. Again, these are all personal preferences. The other key thing is RAM. That's your memory that the computer has, that it uses to do things that you and I don't understand what it's doing. So if you're looking at a Windows machine, PC, you want to have a minimum 8 GB. Please do not buy a machine that sells you 6 GB or 4 GB uh, gigabyte of memory. That is not going to serve you well. For a home use, sure, maybe. For your children or kids to do some homework, yes, 6 GB is good for that. But as a small business, do not buy anything less than 8 GB. Please do not. You want to buy at least 12 to 16 GB at times. That's going to give you more value for your money. But if money is the criteria, then the minimum you want to go is 8 GB. For a Chromebook, minimum available is 4 GB. And for a Chromebook, that is good enough. If you're not running any engineering, or any high powerful softwares, 4 GB is good. And then if not, you may definitely want to go to 8 GB or 16 GB of memory. We call it RAM, RAM memory. You want to go to that. Then comes to hard disk as to how much space your computer has to store your files, to store your pictures, to store your spreadsheets, your Word documents, your PowerPoint, whatever you have. 
For Windows, I would recommend 128 GB at the minimum. And for Chromebook, minimum is 32 GB. 32 GB is minimum available. It also goes to 64 GB for Chromebook. And for Windows, 128 is minimum. But again, if you have that extra money in your pocket, I would say go for 256 GB or 512 GB. It, it'll last you much longer. You'll be much more happier and you will not keep running out of space. It's just like your phone. We all have smartphones. Very soon when smartphone came out, it was 16 GB. And now you don't even get a 16 GB smartphone available because once you start loading all the apps, you realize there's no space for your pictures to take when you're having fun. So now minimum is 64 GB or 128 GB smartphones. So keep that in, that, that's a good way to keep that in mind. So Al, let's, let's talk about, you know, memory space and, and is it better to, to have more space on your hard disk or is it better to have a, a cloud memory where you're storing all of your, your files? Um, is they do news um, C5 and there are op opportunities to um, save files on on that. Um, can you can you speak a little bit in regards to what your recommendation is? Absolutely, absolutely. So then after, actually, if you go to the next slide, I'll be talking about cloud, but cloud, yes. So again, uh, sometimes, um, no, no, let, let's go back to the previous slide, but so cloud, so what happens when you don't have internet connectivity? Okay. What if there's a power outage or your internet provider, there's a glitch and you don't have internet connectivity, then things having in the cloud, you cannot access it. So typically what happens is you'll have files on your machine, on your laptop, on your desktop, and it'll be automatically synced to the cloud every time there's internet connectivity. So what that means that you can also work offline. Say you are traveling, going to a, to a client meeting, you have to fly to California, and you have this four hour flight, you can still get your work done because you have files locally on your machine. And then once you get to California and you get internet connectivity, all your files are synchronized and updated beautifully without you doing anything. So from that perspective, you need to have this space, at least on a Windows machine. In a Chromebook, you don't need that because Chrome doesn't store anything locally on your machine. So with Chrome, 32 GB is good enough. And when it comes to RAM, RAM, it, is, it says that how fast things can process in the background by your computer. So if I'm opening two, three um, power, power, two, three spreadsheets of PowerPoint presentations at a time, how quickly are they going to open up? Do I have to wait forever? Do I have to wait for a minute? Or should I just wait for a couple of seconds and they're up? So that's where the RAM memory comes into play. So there are two different things, but always the goal is to see if you, if, if you have the money to go for the more and more of that. So go for higher RAM, 16 GB RAM or 12 GB RAM, that's great. And if you have the money, go for 256 uh, RAM uh, hard disk or 512 GB hard disk. That will serve you well. And also, also depends on your business. If you are an engineering firm that has CAD uh, drawings, engineering drawings, then those drawings are very heavy drawings. In that case, 256 GB of hard disk may not be enough. You may need... Uh, 512 GB of hard drive, or you may also need one terabyte of hard drive. So your business will also dictate how much space you should have. But that's the minimum we recommend. I hope that helps. Uh, the other thing you want to look for is processor and speed. Of course, go for a newer processor uh, rather than older processor. But again, if you're not very technically savvy and techno, techno savvy person, process and speed is going to be Greek and Latin to you. You may not know exactly what they talk about. For that, you may want to talk to somebody at the store to find out, hey, how good this processor is. And most of the processes are all very good. 
If the processor is an Intel processor, you don't have to worry about, but the other comparable processors are also very good. And sometimes you may just want to do a quick Google search to get some feedback from other people, but I personally don't pay much attention to it. The last piece is warranty and support. As a small business, that's a very important thing in my opinion. It, it lets me sleep well at night. Should something happen to my hard drive? Should something happen to my computer? Should I spill something? Should I drop it accidentally? Am I going to be covered? So yes, I would say if you have that extra couple hundred dollars, go and buy that extra warranty, go and buy that extended warranty, go and buy the support. Uh, they have various support. They have 24 hour support, uh, two day support, three day support. Some have on, on site support, some have telephone support. So look at the different supports, read through it and, and, and buy it if you have, if money is not an issue. Right? Just buy some support that will going to help you, help you in the long run. Also, it's like buying insurance on a car. You hope you never have an, an accident. But you buy that insurance just in case you have an accident, just in case somebody comes and hits you. You are not spending a lot of money to buy a new car. The insurance will cover the damage, will cover the, will cover the expenses. It's just the same thing. Similarly with health insurance. We buy health insurance. We know we're all healthy, but just in case if something goes wrong, we, that health insurance will help pay, pay for that expenses that would come. So yes, you bought a computer. Next thing after that, you need to have security. You've got to have antivirus software. There is no debate on that. You should and you must have it. And sometimes, many times when you buy a laptop or buy a computer, it comes with, sometimes they offer you one year free antivirus software. Sometimes they do. Great, use it. And after that one year, or if they don't have that one year deal, go and buy it. You'll be surprised, like Norton, I just looked the other day, Norton uh, antivirus software costs you about $45 for five devices for one year for the first year. I mean, think about it, $45 for five devices for a year. McAfee has a, has a deal going on about $90 for two years for 10 devices. So you're looking at about $3.75 per month for 10 devices. That is less than a cost of a Starbucks latte coffee for 10 devices. So if you look at the device, if you further go and look at per device, they're looking at about 37 cents per month. So if you have 10 computers, 37 cents per month to get some world-class solution. I mean, you can't beat that price. So please, please go and buy them. We, I've just listed some few of the popular ones. I... Norton, McAfee, sorry, go ahead. No, I've, I've read that a lot of the cyber security issues that have been happening or the cyber attacks that have been happening have been aimed at the smaller uh, micro businesses or the smaller businesses because they don't have the technology or the support that is protecting them from the cyber attacks. Is that true? That is very true. And the reason they cannot because they did not install antivirus software. They thought, hey, nothing's going to happen to us. Nobody's going to come after us. We are so tiny. We are in our basement. We are in our working out of bedroom. Nobody's going to come to us. But trust me, the bad guys are coming for everyone. And they're going to come for small businesses because they know they're so easy to get into. And you cannot afford that to happen. You really cannot afford to happen. You have a client deadline and your computer got infected with virus. Are you going to tell your client, oh, I, sorry, I missed the deadline because I had a virus on my laptop, on my computer. They'll say, hey, we can't do business with you. That's all they will tell you. And guess what? You lost a contract. You lost your bread and butter. So please, please spend that. It's, it's nothing. It's like All you have to do is don't bring uh, the Starbucks latte for one day. Skip one Starbucks latte and we'll pay for your antivirus software or skip one boba tea on a Saturday, one Saturday in the month, 
and you have paid for your antivirus software. So please, it it's costs you nothing, costs you really nothing. So Al, would you recommend a Windows PC or a Mac from, uh, from a cybersecurity standpoint? And the, ca um, the capabilities, uh, you know, what's better for a small uh, business? For small business, um, I personally prefer Windows because a lot of applications, they run on Windows. A lot of your larger clients that you work with, they all have Windows environment. So if you're working with the GM and the Ford and the Chryslers of the world, they're all in a Windows environment. So you'll be better able to communicate and collaborate with that team, those teams. And Mac uh, laptops, yes, the viruses are much lesser. They are much more stronger and well-protected but they come at a price. They are much more expensive. And a lot of business applications and apps are not yet there on the Mac computers. Again, depends on your preference, depends on the type of business you are in and who your clients are. And happy to help you. If you have any more questions, I can add, happy to help you with that. Help you determine what would be a good computer to buy. But again, your clients and your line of business, if you are like a design shop, you're a web designer, then you want to go with a Mac because you have lots of tools on that, a lot of nice graphical design tools that you could use. But if you're like a consulting company, then you may not need a Mac. A Windows machine may be good enough for you, or even a Chrome may be good enough for you. So it all depends on your line of business. But definitely, please look into buying antivirus and installing it and having it on your machine. That is, you should do that. And then, of course, everybody, nobody, everybody knows have strong password, please. Right? That is the key. Have strong passwords. Definitely not your name, not your birth date, not your social security number, not your firstborn, lastborn, none of that information, please. Please do not put one, two, three, four, five, or any of that stuff. I cannot stress enough. Please do not do that for your own good. Okay. You must have read it everywhere. Everybody talks, have strong passwords. Please, please. Get creative. And don't use a password that is public knowledge that people know about you. All right. And also, also try to have multi-factor authentication. Now, most of the online banking, they have multi-factor authentication, so you know it, most of it. They send you a six-digit code, seven-digit code on your cell phone, or they tell you to download an authentication app. So please have multi-authentication uh, enable things because that's going to help protect you. That's going to stop the bad guys from coming into your machine, into your network, taking away your things. And SSL certification, these are needed for websites. And also you should have that. And I will talk about that in the next slide. So yes, you got your computer, you got, you protected it, you had all the good stuff. Now you got to get some work done. So you need some productivity tools. My personally, I'm a big fan of Office 365 for business. That's a Microsoft product. Uh, it costs you about $6. They charge you $6 a month per user. That's again, a cost of one Starbucks latte, one latte, okay? Don't have one latte a, a month and you paid for this Office 365 for business. So a few years ago, five, seven, eight years ago, I forget exactly when, to get what you get for Office 365 for business, you had to be a large organization. You had to be an enterprise where they would pay Microsoft hundreds and thousands of licensing fees. And the same thing, they are giving it to small businesses for $6 a month per user. Literally, they're giving you what they give for large organizations and enterprises level software for free, literally for free. So, and if you pay, I think about $12 a month, you get to get the whole suite of Word, Maya, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. You get the whole licensed version of it for $12 a month. 
And along with that, you get OneDrive, you get one terabyte of storage, you get Teams, Microsoft Teams, you get so many softwares, so many productivity tools that were once only affordable and available for large organizations and enterprises. They were literally cost prohibited for small businesses. You really had to spend a lot of money, but now Microsoft and Google have done a fantastic job of giving you these tools for literally for $12 a month. One terabyte of storage of cloud storage of space that you can use. And one terabyte is a lot, a lot, lot of space. They give you 50 GB of mailbox. And that's also a lot of space for your mailbox, for your emails on your Outlook and things like that. And Google also has similar offerings at a similar price range. So if you're a Google fan, you can use a Google Workspace and SUI. If you're Microsoft, you can use Office 365. I'm a big Microsoft Office 365 because it helps our productivity. It helps us collaborate across our clients and everything. The other thing you want to look into is communications. If as a small business, you may have a landline, the customers can call you. So now you don't need a landline. You could actually have something called VoIP, voice over IP. So your phone lines are being uh, run on, a on an IP, on an internet. The cost is uh, Comcast and AT&T, your internet service providers, they will give you voice over IP. They bundle it up for a very minimum cost, like $10 a month, you'll get something like that. Then you have Teams, Microsoft Teams. If you have an office, Microsoft Office, you get Teams for free. That means you can have host meetings. You can record meetings. You can invite other people into your meetings, video, audio, everything. Also Zoom. Since the pandemic started, Zoom became very popular. Zoom, you still have to pay if you want more than 40 minutes or 20 minutes. So they have a timeline. But if you wanted more, you have to pay for them. But if you have Office 365, then you don't, then Teams is free for you, unlimited. Similarly, if you have Google Suite, then you have Google Meet. The same thing that you can collaborate, video calls and phone calls and things like that. And nowadays, you don't need to buy Adobe to buy Adobe to view PDFs. PDFs can be opened in the browsers. So you don't need to spend money to buy the whole Adobe Suite of product, unless if your business needs it, unless if you really need it, of course. But if you're just something who needs to view the PDFs or share PDFs, the browser can do it for you. And QuickBooks for your accounting. QuickBooks, you can have an online subscription. So you don't really have to pay out of money to buy anything. You can just pay a monthly fee and have it online. So you don't have to worry about it. Your bookkeeper or your accountant can easily access it, or your CPA can easily access your online QuickBooks. And if you choose, you could also have it locally on your machine. It's your choice. But for that, you have to pay a little more and you have to buy a whole product rather than having a monthly online. And sometimes, have, and so these are all subscription based. That means you don't have to spend that capital expense at one time to buy all these things. These are all monthly subscriptions. So it can also help you with your cash flow as a small business. And if you break down the cost, the cost is very minimal. It's very minimal cost. Sometimes it's as good as, you know, hey, I'll not have, I'll go and buy some coffee from McDonald's and not have a fancy coffee you know, for one day a week or one day a month, and you paid for everything that you got. So, and next we'll talk about uh, your domain name and your websites. Everybody needs to have a, every business, small and big, needs to have a website, needs to have an internet presence, regardless of whether you are doing online shopping or you're selling your products online or whatever you're doing. First things anybody is going to come and look at your link link at your LinkedIn profile, and then they are going to come and see on your website what you do, what who are you, and how big are you, how small are you, everything. So you can talk about it as your free marketing. 
So definitely, you need to have a domain. And I just out of curiosity, how many people use their Gmail and Yahoo accounts to conduct business with? Okay. Do not send your business emails using your Gmail or Yahoo. Please do not. Be professional. Have your own company.com domain name and send emails from that. And if you're a Google subscription to Google Suite or Office 365 business, you get that. You'll get that part of your cost, part of your subscription. You get your own personalized email at your company.com, your company name.com email address, domain. And trust me, if your client receives an email from that site, it is, they are going to give you more preference than say coming from a Gmail account. So they, they're just using Gmail. They don't have their own emails. So it just helps you prospect with different clients, new clients, build relationships with clients. So you definitely want your own personalized domain name. Then sometimes you need to have remote access. So TeamViewer is some tools you can use, Flashtop. And Windows machines, they come with something called Quick Assist. And so if you have a $12 subscription with Microsoft Office 365, Microsoft will give you free support, free support. They call you within 30 minutes and they'll ask you to use Quick Assist and they'll help you and they'll support you. I personally have used Quick Assist and Microsoft support for a lot of things. Hey, I thought that this software was supposed to be working this way and it's not working, what's going on? And I would just put in a support ticket. Within 30 minutes, I get a phone call from Microsoft. And they come into my machine and they look at it and say, hey, this thing is not all right, or this is off, and they'll fix it and they make it work for me. So it's super good to have that support available at literally at, not, at no significant cost. Then I, about your printing needs. Dot uh, inkjet printers are really, really cheap. Absolutely, they're really cheap. But guess what? Where they catch you is those ink cartridges. You will spend lots of money on buying those ink cartridges, regardless of how much printing you do. Those ink cartridges have a shelf life. If you do not uh, do enough printing, after a few months, those inks dry up and you have to buy new ink cartridges. And they cost a lot of money. Instead, I would rather uh, have you spend a little extra, a couple hundred dollars more and buy a laser printer. Buy a black and white laser printer, all in one laser printer. Those laser cartridges, those laser things, they, do, they don't have any shelf life. They don't run out of it. They have very long life. So if you don't use a lot of printing, it'll last you forever. It'll last for two, three years, three years, depending on how much printing you do. Whereas same thing, if you buy an inject printer, those ink, you have to keep refilling it. You have to keep buying new ones. Rather, whether you print 10 pages a day or you print thousands of pages a day. Whereas that is not the case with laser printers. And also ADF is automatic document feeder. So if you do a lot of scanning, make sure when you buy a printer, laser printer, it has an automatic uh, document feeder. So you don't have to, scan one page at a time. You can put four or five pages, your documents, and they'll scan it automatically for you. And also the many of the laser, now I think most of the laser printer comes with dual side printing. They'll print both sides for you. So you can save paper, look professional, be good to the environment also. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, thank you. And this is one of the last things, uh, I know we are running out of time, but I'll just uh, bring this last few things. Your website, as I previously mentioned, your website is needed on the internet. It's a must. You have a few options. One is you have a designer who will design a website for you. And when they design the website, you need to host that website. So popular hosting companies, uh, GoDaddy, HostGator, Bluehost, Flywheel, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. There are lots of hosting companies. They are all comparable. Some are good. Some are bad. Some are nice. Some may be good for you. Okay. And many of the times, um, 
if you they have a lot of these promotions going on very often the hosting companies for about $300 you would be able to host for 36 months for $300 so i mean that's like $100 a year for 3 years you can host it which really comes down to nothing per month you'll have a good solid website hosted and sometimes the other thing they call website builder. So if you don't have a designer or web designer to build your home, to design your website for you, you can also use services from website builders. For example, Wix, Squarespace, website builder. There are a lot of other these companies where they'll give you the tools for you to design a website. They'll give you some templates and you can create your website. And then you'll host it on them and they'll charge you a monthly fee for that. And all these companies, they give you free SSL. <clears throat> and that is needed for your Google search, for Google listing, and to give confidence to your users who come to your website that, hey, my website is protected, is encrypted. So when you go to your browser, you see that green lock on the browser that says it's protected. When it's not there, it says unprotected or something like that, not secure. And Google does not like websites that are not protected. You will not come up in good Google ranking. If some company, if somebody has to search for your company, you may not land up on the first page just because you do not have that SSL certification on you. And it's free. It's literally free. It's almost free. Most of these hosting sites will bundle that up for you. And if you're doing e-commerce, uh, there are other solutions that are available like Shopify, Amazon Shops, WooCommerce. You could use these. And they all, Shopify is a subscription-based uh, model, very powerful. They give you credit card processing. They give you everything uh, along with that. And there are many other solutions available in the market. And definitely spend the time to get your business listed in Google listings. You'll be surprised just having a Google listing, you'll be easily findable, searchable. So you should definitely do all these things for your business to grow. If not to grow, at least your clients and your prospective clients and come and look at who you are. The first thing I do when I'm, when I know I, I'm doing when I'm, I'm talking to anybody is I go to the website. If I don't see a website, then I say, okay, hey, are they even real people? I don't know anything about that. And that's the same thing your customers and your clients are going to do. Or if you want to hire somebody, your employer is going to do, hey, this company wants to hire me. What do they do? And they go and they don't find you on the internet. Guess what? They're not going to accept the job from you. And you may be running a one, one person show for a long, long time just because you did not have it. And, and a website, they, they do not break your bank. They do not have to break your bank. You can get a, you can hire some website designer from a lot of these online portals. There's a Fiverr is there for international. You'll have some nice good designer for relatively $15, $20, $30. They'll design your website, a nice professional looking website. Uh, Upwork and lots of these marketplaces are there where you can hire somebody to do it for you. You don't have to do it yourself. Then as a small business and if, and if you accept credit cards, You'll have a one year, two year contract with your credit card processor. Please shop around for some credit card processors. They will come and take your two months, your last two months quarter bill, and they'll run a report for free and tell you how they can save you money on your processing fees, on your merchant fees. They'll actually do that for free for you and say, yes, come join us. It will save you a few hundred dollars a month or a few thousand dollars a year. So something to look around. Uh, banking. I, I use credit union because they don't charge me money for doing everything. If I go to the big 10 uh, banks in the, in the US, they charge me even to deposit a check, they charge me money. Whereas credit unions don't do that. So you may be able to save a lot of money on banking fees and problem bank fees. And of course, as a small business, make sure you have a trusted lawyer, an accountant, a CPA, and insurance agents. These are going to help you when you are in trouble. Absolutely, they're going to help you. So have, make sure you have somebody you trust. 
they may be they may not be your friends and family they may be somebody else sometimes you don't want your friends and family as a trusted accountant or cpa or a lawyer because they always may be some conflict of interest so make sure you hire somebody you talk to your network you talk to your peers and see and you, if they can recommend you someone they trust that you can also trust and i think that's pretty much it for today and i hope i have helped a small business who have just started their business or who are already in business to get a better perspective on technology and how you can save money and to know that you don't need to spend a lot of money to have the same power that big large organizations and corporations have as a small business you can use the small a lot of tools available for literally for free or for one fancy coffee a month at that cost as simple as that thank you so much al my um, pleasure and thank you everybody for joining us for technology 101 for small businesses part of apac small business webinar series for more small business webinar videos check out our playlist uh, more information about apac and the small business action committee national ace and our speaker al will be in located in the description below